Well, that seemed to go pretty well. So my test, I came back up by the house. You can see the pond in the background. So that's a little walk I had up the hill. But I just thought I better come back up here because I noticed the quality of the last video was just, it was kind of speckled and wasn't doing very well. So hopefully this will come across better. But here a while back, and I haven't done one for a while, the Lord laid it on my heart with a, a set of phrase to me, bedtime stories for those who need healing. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting, Lord. And he said, it's so that they can go to sleep thinking about my power. And that's very important when we need healing in our bodies to meditate and feed on testimonies and on the word and on the life of Jesus where he healed people. It's very important to our faith to meditate on the power of God. Going through the book of Acts and reading about the healings that took place there, meditating on the power of God, reading and hearing recent testimonies, meditating and feeding on the power of God. So today I wanted to share with you about a testimony from the life of Dr. Lillian B. Yeomans. I shared her testimony here a while back, and this is just a little summary of it, and then we're going to go on to read about a testimony she shared of a woman who was healed of tuberculosis uh, by meditating and quoting to herself Galatians 3.13. Father, I just thank you tonight for your word. Truly, it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Lord, I pray that this sweet little story, this powerful little story, this true story, Father, will prime the faith pump in those that hear it. Now, Father, their hearts will rejoice and their minds will wonder at the manifestations of your power that follow your word. And Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Dr. Lillian B. Yeomans was a doctor who practiced medicine and surgery many years ago in one of New York City's largest hospitals. She began, she, now this is a little of her testimony, she began to take small amounts of morphine to steady her nerves and help her sleep when she felt exhausted from overwork. Eventually, she became so dependent on drugs that she became an addict. She daily took 50 times, 50 times the normal dose of morphine normally prescribed for an adult male, plus other drugs. Although Dr. Yeomans took all of the celebrated cures of her day and desperately tried to stop taking drugs, she steadily grew worse. A nurse described her as a skeleton with a devil inside. Her friends considered her case hopeless. Dr. Yeomans had been saved as a young woman, but had backslid. When she found herself at death's door, she immersed herself in her long neglected Bible, got back into fellowship with God, and was healed in 1898 of the terrible drug habit that had almost claimed her life. After receiving healing, Dr. Yeomans preached the gospel for 40 some years. When she and her sister inherited some property, they turned it into a faith home, taking in people that were beyond medical help. <laughs> Are you beyond medical help tonight? Oh, hallelujah. If you are, I want to prime your faith pump. She took in people beyond medical help who were seeking healing for their bodies. Dr. Yeomans said they got nearly all of these people healed by working with them until they got enough 
faith built up in their hearts, their spirits, to receive healing from God. God has given you a measure of faith, but it can be fed. It's like a muscle. It's a basic muscle, and it can be fed and exercised and get stronger and stronger. Dr. Yeoman said they got nearly all of these people healed by working with them until they got enough faith built up in their hearts to receive healing from God. In one of her books, she gave the following example of building faith in a patient. Building faith in a patient. So let's see what she did. One day, a woman in the last stages of tuberculosis was brought to the home. Doctors had given her up as beyond medical aid. When the ambulance brought the woman in, Dr. Yeomans knew she was dying. Dr. Yeomans was a medical doctor before she went into the ministry. She knew by looking at the woman, the woman was dying. Had she still been practicing medicine, Dr. Yeomans would have begun to administer strong drugs immediately. Isn't that what we do? I mean, isn't that what they do today to people that are uh, in the last stages of life? Give them strong drugs. <laughs> but instead, the woman was carried to an upstairs room and Dr. Yeomans began reading the Bible to her. She spent about two hours reading scriptures concerning divine healing, especially from Deuteronomy 28 and Galatians 3.13. I feel a challenge right now in my own spirit. It's like I heard a question in there. Could you sit and read healing scriptures for two hours? Hmm. Challenging question, isn't it? Then she instructed the dying woman to repeat to herself every waking moment. To say, repeat to herself. This is very good instruction here. She told the dying woman to, how does it say that? Repeat to herself every waking moment. Maybe she could say it out loud. Maybe she couldn't. But even if you can't say it out loud, you can say it in yourself. This is what she told her to say. According to Deuteronomy 28.22, consumption or tuberculosis is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ is has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I no longer have tuberculosis. Therefore, I, there, therefore, it's a very important, powerful word right there. According to Deuteronomy 28.22, consumption or tuberculosis is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, or the conclusion of that then is, I no longer have tuberculosis. Now remember, she told the woman to repeat that to herself every waking moment. Hmm. I think we should ask ourselves, how much time do I spend during the day speaking the word that heals me? The next morning, Dr. Yeomans asked the woman if she had been repeating what she instructed her to say. She answered that it seemed as if she had said it a thousand times, but she couldn't understand what it meant. Corinthians says the natural man cannot understand the things of God. And your mind, these things of healing, these things of Deuteronomy and Galatians, they're spiritual matters. It's easy for the mind to understand natural matters because it sees them, it hears them. 
But when it comes to spiritual things, things are in the fourth dimension, as we talked about earlier. Things that are over there beyond the veil of the flesh in the spiritual realm. The mind gets at a loss to understand how can this be? That's what Mary said when the angel came to her and said she was going to have a child. And she said, I know not a man, how can this be? So the natural mind does not come to understanding spiritual things right away. They're foreign to them, foreign to it. She answered that it seemed as if she had said it 10,000 times, but she couldn't understand what it meant. Dr. Yeomans read more scriptures to her and then asked her to continue repeating the same words. She didn't change her confession. Once she read more scriptures, she stayed with the same confession. I think there's a good lesson in that. It isn't always the number of scriptures we confess. It's the few that we stay confessing. We keep confessing. They keep registering on us more and more and more, working in us more and more. The next day, so this was day two now, the next day, the story was the same. The woman still didn't understand. On the third morning, the woman still did not understand. Dr. Yeomans had not even prayed with her yet even though she had been in the faith home three nights. So Dr. Yeomans didn't pray immediately. She got the word of God out, read the word of God to her, and gave her an assignment to every waking moment speak these two scriptures and apply them by I have no longer have tuberculosis. On the afternoon, however, of the third day, Dr. Yeomans and her sister were helping to prepare the evening meal when they heard a commotion upstairs. Their new patient came rushing down the stairs, shouting at the top of her voice, Sister Yeomans, did you know? Christ has redeemed me, and I no longer have tuberculosis. It's gone now. See, she crossed the bridge. The mind caught up and went, ah, the light clicked on. Sister Yeomans, did you know? Christ has redeemed me, and I no longer have tuberculosis. Dr. Yeomans realized that if the woman would say to herself often enough, according to Deuteronomy 28, 20, 12, 22, consumption is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I no longer have tuberculosis. And that if she continued to say it to herself often enough, the truth would start to register on her. I challenge you to take those scriptures and insert in place of consumption the name of the condition that you or a loved one desire to be healed from. Because Deuteronomy 28, 61 says that every sickness is a curse of the law. It will work for you too. Just before her death, Dr. Yeomans published a book of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs called The Gold of Ophir. These were the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs the Spirit of God gave to her sister. Dr. Yeoman said that when she and her sister prayed, her sister would sing songs or psalms in tongues and then sing the interpretation. Sometimes she would sing them out as a prophecy. Dr. Yeomans wrote them down and collected them into this book. One of those spiritual songs given by the Spirit of God to Dr. Yeoman's sister was based on Galatians 3.13. And here's what it said. Christ redeemed me from the curse of the law as he hung on that shameful tree. And all that is worse is contained in the curse. And Jesus has set me free. Not under the curse, not under the curse. Jesus has set 
me free. For sickness, I've health. For poverty, wealth. Since Jesus has ransomed me. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law as he hung on that shameful tree. And all that is worse is contained in the curse. And Jesus has set me free. Oh, I'm not under the curse, not under the curse. Jesus has set me free. For sickness I've health, for poverty wealth, since Jesus has ransomed me. This story is found in one of Dr. Yeoman's books, but I couldn't find which exactly which one at the moment. So I pulled that uh, portion of it from Kenneth Hagin's book, Redeemed. It was He talked about it in his book. And so I just printed off that little excerpt to share with you tonight. I just felt that's what the Lord wanted me to do to impress upon you. That woman took those two verses she quoted them to herself every waking moment. At first, her mind could not understand what she was talking about. But one day, the light came on, and the power that was in her was released and healed her, priming her pump, priming faith's pump. Your pump prime. <laughs> oh, dear. We've been talking about the well that's on the inside of you that springs up with everlasting life, with zoe that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that he is that well of life on the inside of you, that he is ready to be drawn on. But he's a river that is flowing and needs refilling. So as you meditate the word, the river flows in. As you speak the word, the river flows out. It affects everything around you. It affects your body. It'll calm your mind. It'll soothe your emotions. Use the word of God as your own personal medicine for your own personal benefit. Go through the day speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I've got a little project that I've been working on, delivered from inward corruption. And as I came to the end of it, <clears throat> I'm looking at how the it says the creature is made subject to corruption. And... Um, I've got a hummingbird flying around here. <laughs> he was just under the table there a minute ago. There he's over there at the feeder now. Um, so I looked at medical terms. There's four different major categories of, me of illnesses, and some of them come at us from the outside, and some of them spring up from the inside. Well, in all of my Christian life, I have been focused on what came at me from out here. I pretty much was not aware of anything that would spring. I've had some incidents of things springing up from the inside, but I guess it just, again, I was like this woman. It hadn't registered on me yet that there are things that are latent, that can be latent in the body that we don't know anything about that can, that can begin to get active. So I've just been doing a little study on that, and I came down to the end, and I asked the Lord, I said, how do we avoid this corruption? Uh that comes at us from out here. It's because of the law of sin and death, because of what Adam loosed in the world. It attacks us from the outside and it wants to work on our bodies from the inside. I said, Lord, how do we escape that? And a scripture came to me right away. This is why it's so important for you to know the word of God, because God will answer you with scripture. The Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance. So if you be a good student of the word, just, just read the word, study the word, look up, look it up in different versions. Find a version that specifically, specifically quickens and makes your insides jump. And <clears throat> write it down and then go through the day quoting it to yourself. Have fellowship with the word through the day. Turn off the teachers, turn off the Christian music, and just have fellowship with the word. Have a word song that you sing. I'm going to share one with you tonight a little bit. And 17, Acts 17, 28 came to me. In him we live and move and have our being. And I saw us living in him. He was like the cloud around us and in us. And we moved in that in the daytime. Being in him 
more as we go through our daily lives than what we have ever been up to this point. In Him, living and moving and having our very being. I think it is something that we're all pressing towards still. And the closer we get to doing it, the more we will enjoy a life of wellness because we'll constantly be in that atmosphere of his spirit and living in that life, that realm of life in Christ Jesus that quickens the mortal body all the time. Hallelujah. Well, I had a little song reading through Dr. Yeoman's little story there. A little song came to me, and it's a word song. We used to sing it a long time ago. It's an old, old school song. I sing old school songs mostly because they have a lot of scripture in them. They minister to me. They bring faith. They prime my faith pump. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of share. I'm going to call this my bedtime lullaby for you. Mm. Well, by his word, I have no fear in me. By his word. Oh, listen to this next one. Death cannot swallow me. By his word, I have prosperity. By his word, I walk in victory. By his word, I've been set free. Oh, by his word, I've been set free. By his word, I'm going to try that again. I have no fear in me, by his word, death cannot swallow me, by his word I have prosperity, by his word sickness can't dwell in me, <laughs> oh by his word I walk in victory, yes by his word I've been set free. Oh, by his name, by his name, I have no fear in me. By his name, oh, by his name, death cannot swallow me. By his name, oh, I have prosperity. And by his name, sickness can't dwell in me. Lord, by your name, oh, I walk in victory. Yes, by your name, I've been set free. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. And the last one, by your blood. Lord, by your blood, oh, I have no fear in me. By your blood, oh, death cannot swallow me. By your blood, I have prosperity. And by your blood, Lord, Oh, put your hand on yourself. Sickness can't dwell in me. Yes, by your blood, oh, I walk in victory. By your blood, I've been set free. Oh, I worship you, Lord. By your word, Lord, oh, I have no fear in me. By your word, death cannot swallow me. By your word, I have prosperity. By your word, Sickness, oh, sickness, you can't dwell in me. Lord, by your word, oh, I walk in victory. Yes, by your word, 
you've set me free. Oh, Sandarama Kandarama Sohola Mahande. Oh, Horama Hayande Lama Sorama Shikeli Mendeliande. Oh, Lama Sayanda Lama Kandarama Say. By your name, Lord. By your blood, Lord. By your word, Lord, I've been set free. By your word, Lord, by your name, Lord, by your blood, sickness can't dwell in me. <laughs> oh, I'm a seal, I'm a sigh, she come Monday. Sing the song of the redeemed and rejoice in the Lord, for he is great and mighty, and he has delivered you. <laughs> That's what I was singing in tongues a minute ago. Oh, rejoice in the Lord and lift your voice, for he is great and mighty, and it is he who has delivered you. And he sent his word to tell you, delivered you from sickness, delivered you from death. Oh, hallelujah. Delivered you from poverty to walk in victory. Oh, I see the heel passing before me. Oh, I see the heel passing before me. Thousands and thousands of them I see passing before me. A multitude that no man can number will stand up and say, The Lord Jesus healed me. <laughs> By his stripes he healed me. He sent his word and healed me. Oh, Oh, la makayande, la masundoramande. Oh, draw one to my word, draw one to my spirit, draw one to my ways of healing, says the Lord. Oh, sikama tuta matata. Draw unto my ways of healing, my ways of healing, says the Lord. Oh, my Lord. <clears throat> your ways of healing, your spirit. And your word, draw. <coughs> You're telling us to draw onto your ways of healing. Oh, katamasika mata la masonto lo boshata. Ye da masure me kandari ase. Oh, it doesn't matter to me how many of you there may be. Did I not heal the multitudes in the wilderness? The thousands that came out of Egypt. Did I not have Moses lift up the staff in the wilderness? Oh, and anyone that looked at it, would the serpent upon the pole would be healed? So I was lifted up. Hallelujah. So it does not matter how many of you that there are. Don't think, well, there's no room near the Lord for me to be healed. There's too many around him already. There's too many that need him already. There's too many that are drawing on him already. Oh, didn't I create manna in the wilderness every day, however much they needed? Yes, you did, Lord. Yes, you did. And healing is the children's bread. And I make as much as I need, and I multiply it every day. Just as I multiplied the loaves and the fishes and had my disciples administer it to the multitude. And wasn't there leftovers? Yes, there was leftovers that were gathered in a basket. Oh, so never think there's not enough for me. <laughs> Don't ever say there's not enough for me. Because I have the recipe, you see. And however you need, I can make it instantly. <laughs> Oh, let's just rejoice in the Lord. I, he is so wonderful. I hope you heard what he said. And I don't know if any of you out there are feeling that. It was just like I, I didn't have an outward vision, but I could just see in my mind multitudes passing by, multitudes passing by. And they were all the multitudes that had been healed by the Lord. And then that thought came into me, but Lord, is there enough left for me? You've healed so many. Is there enough left for me? And that's when the Lord just wanted to encourage you all. Yes, there is enough for you. Just like he fed them in the wilderness with the manna. 
Every day he provided it, and on the sixth day he gave twice as much. Hallelujah. And he said, even with the, 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 oh, I get tickled at the Lord, the way he shares things. They are so neat. He's telling you a bedtime story tonight. And the way he tells them, they're just, they just catch you away. I could just see him. He's just sitting up there on his throne, just praying and multiplying, praying and multiplying. He intercedes for you, you know. He wants you to be well. He wants you to receive what he's offering. He's making the bread. He's passing the bread out every day, just like he did with the loaves and the fishes and the multitude. And he said, don't worry. He said, I can make it instantly if you need it. I never run out. So be encouraged tonight. Hallelujah. There is enough to go around for you too. There's enough to go around for you too. I speak healing to bodies tonight, to your body. I don't know what is wrong with it, but I'm sure that it falls in Deuteronomy 28 somewhere. And it says, even after all the lists of the diseases that are mentioned there, just to make sure that nobody was left out, the verse is there, and whatever diseases aren't listed here, Hallelujah. So no matter what has developed since the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, it's included. It's included in the curse of the law. And Jesus, he was died. He died for your sins and justified you so the curse of the law can't hold a, a case against you anymore. You're free from the case against you brought by the law. Jesus paid the debt he did not owe, and you owed a debt you could not pay. And he came, and he washed your sins away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you're included. Anything that you're dealing with is included in Deuteronomy 28 and Galatians 3.13. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want to read that to you again here right quick before I pray a little bit more. <clears throat> According to Deuteronomy 28:22, consumption or tuberculosis, put in there whatever is troubling you, is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3:13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I no longer have and say whatever it is that you are dealing with. Hallelujah. Well, it's getting darker here. Can you tell it? Oh, so ramakila masonda la boshi gara masonda la basoto ramoshata. Father, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. <laughs> oh, Father, streams opened on Calvary's, on the Mount of Crucifixion. Hallelujah! And the floodgates opened wide. And Father, it is an incessant tide that has been flowing ever since the precious blood came down from his side. And Lord, I thank you today that those rivers of healing waters are flowing right now to wherever this person, any person that sees this, where they are. Oravasata, healing waters flow. Healing waters flow in with the healing waters and out with the polluted waters of sickness. In, put in your hands on yourself. In with the healing waters. See, when you say it, you activate that well that's on the inside of you and it starts flowing. The Holy Spirit out here comes together with the Holy Spirit in here. Let him go. The flow opened at Calvary. Hallelujah. That's my little song I shared earlier. Oh, hallelujah. There's a fountain flowing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've shared it a couple postings ago from the Welsh Revival. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to the little story and the song. You will be so blessed. Oh, satarama sondorobo shandarama sorobo shigarabi gidibi gidiyaka. Father, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, and I worship you. Lord, touch hearts, touch minds, touch bodies. Bring 
a life of wellness into manifestation in the lives of those, Father, that are looking to you as their healer. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, I pray you've all enjoyed this little bedtime story tonight. Hallelujah. Just keep your hand on yourself now. Don't let that wonderful, sweet spirit and that word the Lord gave us drift away from you. Make some notes in your phone. Hallelujah. According to Deuteronomy 28, so-and-so that I'm dealing with is a part of the curse of the law. And according to Galatians 3.13, I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Therefore, I no longer have so-and-so. Hallelujah. His word has its assignment to bring healing to your body. So let it go. <laughs>